This assignment isn't too difficult either, so uh, here are some examples where the order of operations matters. So let's do 2 modulus 2 plus 1, and that will return 1, because 2 mod 2, that will return 0. Here, 2 nope, mod 2, that's 0, because 2 divides evenly into 2. And actually, this is a fairly nice way of determining whether a number is even or odd. So, just as an example, 1 mod 2, that will return 1, saying that it's not even. Okay, so, what we get here is we have 0 plus 1, and that is equal to 1. So now we can do 2 mod 2 plus 1, and then that's 2 modulus 3, because this one, 2 plus 1 is in the parentheses, which is 3, and then 2 mod 3 is 2. And then we can do 2 plus 1 mod 2, and that will actually give us 3, because we have... Whoa. Yeah. 3 mod 2... Er, no. That's wrong. 1 mod 2 is um, 1. 1 plus 2 is actually 3. So, I'm not entirely sure what I meant by using the uh, logical AND to demonstrate the order of operations with these, um, with math, but uh, just know that the AND and the OR will be evaluated more or less after everything else. Let's do all the math, get all of that stuff out of the way, uh, do both sides of the AND or the OR, then if anything is false for an AND operator, it will return a false. Otherwise, if everything is true, the AND operator will return a true. Um, if anything is true for an OR operator, it will return a true. If anything... actually not true. It's if anything is not false, or if... Yes, if anything is not false for an OR operator, it will return true, or the not false value. Okay, um, so yeah, we can actually start to see how Python uses the uh, short circuit evaluation to speed up the OR and the AND operations when we work beyond the simple true-false boolean values and just the ones and zeros. The AND operation must check that each value is not false or not zero since zero is equal to false. We can check that by doing zero is equal to false and it will return true. Um, so what it does is it goes along and it checks that or it looks are you zero? Are you false? Are you zero? And then it goes on to the next one. Are you zero? Are you false? And if neither are then it will return that last value. So 1 and 2, it returns 2, because this one's not 0. And so it says, okay, you're not 0. Maybe the next one is. Oh, you're not 0. Is there anything else? Nope. Return. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the OR operation must check that each value is false, or that it is 0. And um, it will stop on the first non-false value if you have a list of ORs. Uh, therefore, the OR will return the first non-zero value. The reason I'm saying non-false is, as I was saying, um, instead of true, the uh, true is only for one. So true is equal to one, that will return true. However, true is not equal to two, as shown here. So true not equal to two, true isn't equal to 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up. Um, it's not true. Only 1 is true, and only 0 is false. Um, so we can still return a non-true value, or let's see, it doesn't have to be true to be returned by the OR kind of a tongue twister and a brain twister right there. So anyway, let's uh, go ahead and 
do some uh, demonstrations with that. So 0 or 0 or 2 will return 2. It goes to the first one here. Are you non-zero? No, you're zero. Then it goes on to the next one. Are you zero? Yes, you're zero. So then it goes on to the next one. Are you non-zero? Yes, two is not equal to zero. I can tell you that right now. And it's not true either. So it just returns two. One or three or, that's not a three, or a five will return one because it checks on this first one and says, are you zero? Nope, you're not zero, I'm returning you. And then zero or zero or zero is a zero. And that is consistent with our going along until the last value. And so it just returns that last value, which is zero. Now let's do some stuff with the ands. So one and two and zero will return zero because it goes on, are you zero? Nope. Are you zero? Nope. Are you zero? Yes. So it returns zero. Whereas one and two and three will return three because it goes, are you zero? Nope. Are you zero? Nope. Are you zero? No. So all of these are okay. So then it just returns the three. So now the last part is asking for an if statement using an and and another if statement using an or. So let's just do something easy. So let's do an if one plus one, that'll, re that'll evaluate two and true. And then I use four spaces, uh, print, this is a print statement. And then another print statement because I was asking for multiple print statements in the block. Um, this is another print statement. And then let's just do one more for fun. And just keep those lined up because Python will complain if you don't. Uh, we are doing a lot of printing because this evaluated to true. And that should actually be a capitalized letter because Python uses a capital T for their true. And then else, one, two, three, four, print, this didn't evaluate to true. And then we can actually use a new line character. We are only going to use one print statement. And then, as you see, one plus one and true, you all evaluates to true or a non false value. And so it executes these three print statements right there. So let's actually bring that back. So I'm gonna copy this. Actually, no, I'm not. I want that and not true. And then I want everything else. No, oh, I didn't like that. Anyway, that would print this bottom portion. And if you want to see that new line character actually puts a new line, which is kind of cool. And then we can do more or less the same with the or. So if one plus one or true, this obviously will evaluate to true. Let's put false just for fun. One, two, three, four, print this is true, huzzah else, one, two, three, four, print, this isn't true. And it evaluates to true because one of these is true. So let's actually put in another one minus one, just for fun. Okay, and then that else, print this isn't true, this is true, and that is actually still going to print this is true. Yeah. Yes, so it works, huzzah, we win. So that is that. Um, we've demonstrated some blocks, and hopefully you've figured out how to use those. 
Um, and we did some stuff with the ores. Hopefully you understand how those work and the order of operations. It's a very important thing. A lot of people mess up on order of operations. I've seen it on Facebook where um, people are contradicting each other saying, no, this adds up to zero or this number adds up to five. And it's usually a, an order of operations issue. And of course, they don't like you saying that, but it is, and they should probably go back to third grade or fourth grade, depending on where you learned it. But um, yeah, order of operations, very important. Keep it in mind. And I hope you were successful in figuring out how to do this. <laughs>